It's at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Who knows what was going on uh, with that driver, but he decided he had enough, went around the truck and opened fire. This morning on GMSA, San Antonio police looking for a driver who shot an off-duty officer overnight, while they're now saying road rage could have led to the gunfire. Plus, two teens are in the hospital this morning after a fight ends in a double shooting. What police are saying now about the suspect. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City. Yes, you are seeing that temperature on your screen correctly. 51 degrees here in San Antonio to start your Sunday. What is the rest of the day? What does Halloween look like? Sarah Spivey has your trick or treat forecast in just a few moments. Good morning. It is six o'clock this Sunday. It is I love October that. 30th. We have <laughs> almost made it to Halloween. So I got to say, you know, it's starting to get kind of chilly out there. That air tire pressure. Yeah, lights are coming on. <laughs> oh, I I, I didn't ha I had that last mm -hmm. last front. Um, this front I used my heater in the car for the first oh. time. It was so I know it says 51. It felt colder than 51. The blanket, the Just jacket. Like, I walked out without a jacket. I was like, what am I doing here? Well, guys, there are areas around San Antonio that are in the 40s wow. this morning. 51 is just the official temperature at the airport. But let me tell you, yesterday was honestly, I Perfect. think, winds for the best day of the year so far. It was beautiful outside, plenty of sunshine, low humidity. We only got up into the low 70s for the high temperature. Today will be a little bit warmer, but it's still going to be a beautiful day. Out in San Antonio at the airport, it's 51 degrees, 50 in New Braunfels, 50 in Seguin, 52 in Pleasanton. Now today, Huertos Fest continues at Hemisphere from noon all the way to 9 p.m. tonight. If you're planning on heading out and around San Antonio, it'll be near 70 degrees right around noon, 78 for the high temperature today. And then later on tonight, temperatures will fall into the 60s. We have got a lot to unpack in the forecast. I want to talk about rain chances actually increasing right around the time of trick or treating. Now, I do not expect a washout, but there are going to be areas of light rain showers during peak trick or treating hours. So we're going to talk about that and how much uh, potential rain we could expect from this next chance for rain coming up in a few minutes. It's Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, San Antonio police are searching for a suspect in the shooting of an off duty officer who was driving home with his son in the car. SAPD investigating and they're looking for the person responsible. But right now, police believe that this shooting actually started as road rage. So take a look. This was the scene around 915 last night. This is on Northwest Loop 1604 and New Gilby Road. Now, police tell us that the man who was shot, a 47-year-old who is an off-duty police officer, he's been with SAPD for 18 years. That off-duty officer driving home with his son, another driver started to tailgate them in a white sedan. That's when police say the driver passed the truck. The suspect pulled out a weapon and fired several shots. Now, the officer's son called police for help. Now, that officer was shot, taken to the hospital. At last check, he is in stable condition. As for his son, the 16-year-old, he is not injured in the shooting. Police did find shell casings on the highway during the investigation. Now, the officer did not return fire. The suspect drove off, and police are still searching for them. Well, police are also investigating a double shooting that sent two teenagers to the hospital. SAPD says it happened just after 930 last night along Lord Road. That's on the east side near Loop 410. They tell us three teens were in a fight at a Stella at the Stella Apartments when two of them were shot. Both of them taken to Bamsey in stable condition. Police have one person in custody and charges are expected soon. Top of your morning headlines, more than 150 people dead after being crushed in a crowd after a huge Halloween party in South Korea. So according to witnesses, people became trapped and crushed as a crowd pushed into narrow alleys surrounding bars and clubs in South Korea. Now the National Fire Agency says the victims were largely in their 20s. Now, this weekend was South Korea's largest Halloween celebration since the pandemic began three years ago. Back here at home, hospitals are feeling the strain of the worst flu season since 2009. Texas is one of five states where pediatric hospital beds are topping 90% capacity. Another nine states are above 80%, the highest level seen in two years. The surge in flu cases comes as hospitals are seeing a growing number of children with respiratory viruses. Health officials say there's no magic bullet to avoid the flu this year, they recommend hand washing and staying home when you're sick. Mississippi extending its state of emergency over the Jackson water crisis. It now goes until November 22nd. 
The order was first issued, remember, back in August after a massive operational failure at a water treatment plant, and that left thousands of people without running water for days. Right now, state and city officials are still arguing over who is responsible. Jackson's mayor says a private operator will take over the water system before the state of emergency ends. Time now, 605, 51 degrees out. Max, the homeostasis of my house, mm, it's back. It's more it's stable back. after after this win last night. All right, so the Astros tying the World Series after a huge win at home in game two. We're going to look at what comes next. The series shifting to the East Coast, and of course, it's happening on Halloween night. And after the break, experts seeing a huge drop in bugs. Why they say a bug apocalypse is not a good sign. And let's take a quick live look out there. All right, so tell me about the preparations. I know this is the, I think, the coldest day you've had so far this year. I'm drinking the hottest coffee ever right now. Uh, we've officially <laughs> switched from cold uh, coffee. It's official. Official, all and right. And extra hot. Extra. <laughs> We're going to check it with Sarah's five in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. A bug apocalypse. So between widespread pesticide use and drought, the executive director of the National Butterfly Center in Rio Grande Valley says our pollinators are dying quickly and it is not good. Yeah, I spoke with the director of the center who explains why we need our insects to survive. If the insects disappear, we won't be far behind. The director of the National Butterfly Center, Mariana White, says the matter of our bugs and pollinators dying out right now is much more urgent than people realize. Right now we are experiencing what scientists call an insect apocalypse. Over the past few years, several studies have shown that at least 40% of the world's insects are dying at a rapid rate. Some research shows that 90% of certain species have been wiped out. And what that means for humans is higher temperatures, more terrible floods, worsening air quality, all of the um, worst aspects of climate change. So what do bugs have to do with climate change? She explains that our pollinators, especially the butterflies, combat climate change by keeping our vegetation alive. That butterflies pollinate the majority of all of our grasses, wildflowers, shrubs, and trees. All of those things, that green vegetation, is what keeps our planet cool. It reduces erosion and improves air quality. It filters water and produces clean air. She says two big factors are hurting our pollinators. One is a severe drought we are experiencing here in South Texas. We saw it firsthand at the center. And you can see how the drought is impacting right here at the Butterfly Center, usually filled with blooms, a lot of these of plants just trying to survive. The other factor is pesticide use, especially through wide use in farming. Pesticides are killing all of the insects because that's what pesticides are designed to do. They are designed to poison bugs, all of them. Wright says it's urgent we stop using pesticides immediately and combat climate change to help not just keep our pollinators alive, but us as well. Life on Earth literally depends on pollinators. That's butterflies, bees, birds, bats, and other insects. They also are the basis of the food system for all living things. Just a lot of fascinating insight uh, when I went to the National Butterfly Center. Um, it was a little alarming what she was saying, and, and um, I first was like, okay, how, what's the connection here? We're losing our bugs and climate change. She's like, I was like, how do our bugs help us combat climate change? And she was like, okay, we don't have our grasses, shrubs, trees, um, which help us keep us cool when the earth is warming and stuff. She's like, our bugs pollinate those. I was like, oh, this is so simple. Okay, this makes sense. So a lot of interesting stuff. Um, more stories on KSAT.com about this. Absolutely. All right, Sarah Spivey, 51 degrees. Is this yeah, the, the coldest day so far in October? Uh, no, we've had temperatures a little bit cooler than this. We got down into the low 40s and even Ooh. upper 30s at times around San Antonio. But it's still chilly out there this morning. Temperatures are right near 50 degrees. But guys, I want to say, you know, start to plan for some changes or uh, later tomorrow during the hours of trick or treating. We could have some light rain in the area. Now it'll be spotty, but it will be a good idea for you to have that umbrella handy if you're taking the kiddos trick or treating. Outside right now, though, it is 51 degrees. 
chilly out there and dew points are in the upper 40s. Winds are a lot lighter than they were yesterday. We're seeing west northwest winds at about five miles per hour and today we really only expect a breeze from the uh, west and northwest at about five miles per hour throughout the day. It's a chilly 45 in Kerrville. Good morning in your valley. It's 47 degrees 47 in Hondo. It's 52 in Gonzales 50 in New Braunfels 52 in Pleasanton. It's 49 in Del Rio. As we take a closer look around San Antonio, it's 50 in Seguin, 50 in New Braunfels, 45 in Bulverde, Bernie, and 50 in Holotus. A chilly start to the day, but we once again are going to quickly see the sun uh, warm us up a bit. We'll be at the low 60s by 10 o'clock with sunny skies. And throughout the day today, what you'll notice is you'll notice some cirrus clouds streaming in from the west. So we're going to be seeing a milky hue to the sky, mostly sunny though and near 70 at noon. And then in the afternoon, a little bit warmer than yesterday. Yesterday we got up to 74. Today we're going to be at 78 degrees for the high temperature. And again, we'll have light winds uh, from the north at about five miles per hour. As for highs in your neighborhood, it'll be 78 in Canyon Lake, 79 in Hondo, 77 in Del Rio, 75. 79 in Pleasanton and 80 in Catula. Again, a fairly very nice day around San Antonio today. There's that front that moved through on Friday morning. As you can see, it is pushing off to the east. In its wake, we have another system that's setting up across the Four Corners region. This is a trough of low pressure, and it's going to be moving into Texas tomorrow. So let me take you through the future cast, get you ready for Halloween and any kind of trick or treating. Now, early tomorrow morning, we are going to have mostly cloudy skies. It'll still be a cool start to the day right around 54. As that low approaches throughout the day, we're actually going to see clouds develop so that by the afternoon hours, it's going to be cloudy and we'll even start to see some showers off to the west, perhaps even a rumble of thunder out near Del Rio in the afternoon. This is a snapshot right at about three o'clock. And then once we see the evening, uh, We'll be looking at some scattered showers pushing in. This is a snapshot of the future cast tomorrow at about six, right before sunset. As you can see, we'll have some spotty light rain in the area. A chance for rain is about 40% tomorrow in the evening hours. That does include during the trick or treating hours. And again, it's not going to rain everywhere all evening. This rain will be spotty and scattered about 40% coverage. As we look into midnight, closer to midnight after most of the kids should be in bed if they don't have a sugar high. It's going to still be looking like some scattered showers out there into the overnight hours as well and through the early morning commute on Tuesday with that low pressure system nearer to San Antonio. Now again, we're not anticipating any severe weather whatsoever and by the mid morning hours, most of this should be out of the uh, San Antonio area by Tuesday mid morning. So here's some things that you need to know for trick or treating tomorrow tomorrow. Plan for a spotty scattered light rain. Bring the umbrella just in case. You may not need it the whole time you're trick or treating, but bring it just in case. It'll be coolish too with temperatures in the low 70s and upper 60s. What we'll be watching for, even though lightning is unlikely, we'll be watching for an isolated flash of lightning. No severe weather, but remember that lightning can strike well beyond where a storm is. So when thunder roars, go indoors. That would be the only interruption to any kind of trick or treating out there tomorrow night. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty mild for the week ahead, warming up Thursday and Friday, and then we have an even better chance for rain on Saturday. At least that's what it's looking like so far. I, we do not anticipate a lot of rain with this uh, event tomorrow night and Tuesday morning. Coming up, I'll have a look at rainfall potential in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Just about 617, 51 degrees out. Still to come on GMSA, two high schools from the Alamo City made it to the first ever state water polo tournament. Don't miss the action from the pool before 6.30. And SAFC only one match away from the USL championship game. So why the road to this year's title runs through San Antonio. All right. Go Astros! After falling in Game 1 of the World Series, the Houston Astros didn't have to wait long for redemption. The house is okay. You guys the house are good is to go. okay. We're good now. All right, so <laughs> taking on the Phils in Game 2, Astros had support of the home crowd at Minute Maid Park. Up 3-0 in the bottom of the fifth, Alex Bregman launches one to the moon, a two-run blast. 
But here's the thing, Astros up 5-0, and they did this before in game one. They didn't blow the lead this time, though. Philly was able to make a run late. Didn't matter. Astros go on to win 5-2, so the series tied at one game apiece. Valdez had nine strikeouts, gave up a run in six innings. I was really worried because when I went to bed, they were still up 5-0. to zero, And, I was and this like, happened to this Friday happened to night. Me before. I was like, <laughs> I can't go to bed at peace. All right, so looking ahead, the series shifts to Philadelphia this week. Game three is Halloween night at 7, and game four is November 1st. The Phillies will have three straight games on the East Coast, so if the Astros want to win their second World Series title, it'll have to be on the road. Game five is scheduled for Wednesday. And I'm sure that... For the second straight season, SAFC will play in the Western Conference Final. This time, they're going to be hosting it here in San Antonio Toyota Field. Alamo City Club rolling past Oakland Roots SC in the semifinal Friday night 3-0. Now, Sam Idineron, well, he scored the opening goal in the second minute of play to set the tone. Santiago Patino got two in the second half, securing that W. Now, San Antonio will face Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC next Sunday, 7.30, San Antonio, just for just so we're clear, we won both matches against Colorado throughout the season. So expectations are high. And, uh, you know, going back to the Astros, I know a lot of friends and family in Philadelphia, they're excited because they got one game on the road and they're so pumped. Yeah. I mean, they can't afford the tickets because they're egregious, you know. Oh, well, yeah. Philly doesn't make the, the World Series as much as the Astros. <laughs> but the Astros tickets were still... Yeah. Crazy. I think cheapest was maybe seven, eight hundred dollars just for like the standing room. Oh, that's what I heard. All right, shout out our David Elder in the stands. Six twenty two, fifty one degrees out. All right, just ahead, we're hitting the pool for the first ever state water polo tournament. How local teams rep the Almo City. That's after this. The first ever UIL State Water Polo Tournament was held Saturday in San Antonio at Josh Davis Natatorium. Our Brandeis girls were the first to represent our area against Brazos Wood in the semifinals. So the Broncos got on the board first. Breakaway for Addie Wilson. Puts it past the keeper, a 1-0 lead. A little later, she finds Grace Goldhammer. Wait for it, a shot inside the near post. And Broncos held a 3-2 lead early in the first. The Buccaneers, though, answer with eight straight, leading 10-3 at halftime after a historic season for the Broncos. Coming to an end, 15-4 is your final. And next up, after an 11-7 victory over Richmond Foster in the state semifinals, the Bernie champion boys hitting the deck at six for the first ever UIL Boys State Championship, again against Brazos Wood. So the Chargers hanging tough in the first half. Bexon Harrison, a gorgeous shot, far right post. Bang, that's in. So champion trails 8-6 to the break. Second half, Chargers still fighting. Emmy Martinez snipe in the far post, and he's fired up. So is the crowd. Look at that. We need some of those. You know, yeah, go to the natatorium. <laughs> I know. The Bucks though, score the final five goals of the match. They go on to win 19-10. Champion finishes as the first ever state runners up. So congratulations to everyone who competed yesterday. It was a jam-packed day. I know. Congrats, everyone. Time now, 627, 51 degrees up. Still ahead at 630, famous actress America Ferreira is visiting San Antonio this weekend. And it's not just for the Elton John concert. We'll explain <laughs> what's going on in just a few moments. Good morning, welcome back. It is 6.30 this morning. It is Sunday, it is October 30th. We are just a day away from Halloween. So. Show off the earrings a little bit. Got some spooky earrings. Nice. They're Dia Los Muertos theme. Nice. My mom sent me the earrings. Thanks, Aww. Patty. My mom always sends me earrings in the mail for like holidays and stuff. It's really sweet. Thanks, mom. That's adorable. So <laughs> yesterday, though, you did go to Muertos Fest. Yes, I did. And I went early because I'm, I'm, okay. Okay, there we go. There we go. <laughs> nice. Got them. Look great. Cute. Thanks, Mom. Um, no, but I went down to Muertos Fest, and I went during the day because it was beautiful weather. We walked from KSAT mm -hmm. down, th we walked through the river, not through the river, but on the river. On walk. the river. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we eventually made our way down to Hemisphere, and beautiful uh, weather, perfect crowds. And then right when it was getting a little crowded in the afternoon, we walked back. Yeah. <laughs> 
That sounds about right, Sarah. Yeah, but we were talking while we were getting ready for the show. I think yesterday wins for perhaps the most gorgeous days so far this fall. I mean, it really wasn't even too warm. We got up to about 74 degrees outside right now, though. It is chilly out there. You're going to want that cup of coffee if you're planning on being outside early this morning. 51 in the airport at San Antonio International, 50 in New Braunfels. Good morning in Hondo. It's 47 degrees, 45 in Bernie, 44 in Kerrville, 45 in Comfort, and it's 53 at Stinson. Now today is going to look a little bit like yesterday, except just a smidge warmer. We're going to be looking at a high temperature in the upper 70s this afternoon, and it will not be as windy as it was yesterday. West Northwest winds at five miles per hour. You'll also notice that clouds gradually will increase. We'll see cirrus clouds, those high thin wispy cirrus clouds working their way in from the west. It's going to be a cool evening too, with temperatures falling into the low 60s by midnight. But there are a few things that we need to talk about. First of all, as I just mentioned, today is going to be very very pleasant with low humidity. Tomorrow, however, we're really going to be seeing increasing clouds so much though that it'll be cloudy in the afternoon and we have an evening rain chance. So during trick or treating, I do expect some scattered spotty light rain, not a washout by any means, but there are a few things that I want you to keep in mind for a, a trick or treating. If you're planning on keep taking the kids out, uh, we'll have a look at that and your future cast coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police searching for a suspect in a shooting of an off duty officer who was driving home with his son. So police believe the shooting was a road rage incident. Police say the off duty officer was driving home with his son when a driver started to tailgate them in a white sedan. That's when police say the driver passed their truck and fired several shots. The officer's son called police for help. The off duty officer was shot and taken to the hospital in stable condition. Now the officer's son who is 16 years old was not injured in the shooting and police found shell casings on the highway during their investigation. The off duty officer did not return fire and the suspect drove off after the shooting. A man behind bars this morning accused of shooting someone just over a week ago. So take a look. Police say 19 year old Jordan Arousa got into an argument over money with 42 year old Benito Soto back on October 21st. An arrest affidavit reads that Soto punched Arousa, told him to leave the property before getting into his car. Arousa allegedly turned around and shot Soto in the chest. Soto was taken to the hospital. He's currently recovering. Arousa, though, now being charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Now we're getting new details into the shocking release of Spurs guard Josh Primo over the weekend. So multiple reports from ESPN and The Athletic claim that Primo exposed himself to women. So the reports were first published last night. ESPN was the first to report the news, but The Athletic says Primo exposed himself to a former Spurs employee and that she's already hired attorney Tony Busby to represent her. You may remember Busby. He's represented 30 women who sued Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson for sexual misconduct. As for Primo, he was a former first round pick for the Spurs in the 2021 NBA draft. Now these are still allegations and Primo is still 19 years old. He's currently scheduled to hit the free agent market on Monday unless another NBA team claims him. We'll have more on this story as it develops in the weeks to come. So a developing story this morning, a traffic stop in Seguin ends with one man dead and another in the hospital after a state trooper allegedly pulled his gun and fired. So all of this according to the Seguin Gazette. In the report, a DPS trooper arrived to help with what was believed to be a stolen pickup truck in the parking lot of Love's Travel Stop right off I-10. Citing DPS on the scene, the report says when the trooper got out of his vehicle, the driver of the truck put in a reverse, backing into another law enforcement vehicle on the scene. That's when they say the trooper opened up fire on the truck, hitting the driver and the passenger. The driver reportedly died on the scene. The passenger was brought to a hospital here in San Antonio. We are still waiting to learn his condition. We have reached out to DPS for comment, and we are still waiting for a response. Bear County Sheriff's deputies say an inmate tried to make a run for it Saturday morning, attempting to escape from the jail annex. They say 38 year old Genevieve Golden ran out of an emergency exit door around 1:15. A jailer saw her and immediately ran after her, taking her back into custody. Golden is now facing a charge of escape. Deputies say she was originally in jail for an arson charge from earlier this month. That was a first degree felony. 
a national organization and a well-known actress visiting the Alamo City this weekend, all for a one-of-a-kind parade using tradition and passion, trying to rally voters to get to the polls. So well-known actress turned advocate America Ferreira joined the nonpartisan voter advocate group she founded Harness with two other groups, When We All Vote and the Jolt Initiative. They came together in San Antonio's historical Avenida Guadalupe neighborhood to educate voters about their civic duty. Part of the initiative included beautiful quinceañeras using their special day to increase participation awareness among Latino voters. The young women here today have decided to use the occasion of their quinceañeras, beautiful celebration of their transition into womanhood, to engage their families and their communities around early voting. I'm well, 2018, I plan on voting and just keeping up with the events, the current events. Well, we have about a week left for early voting, and so far, over 180,000 people have already casted their ballots here in Bear County. Polls are open today from noon to 6 p.m. this week. Polling locations will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. To find a full list of those spots, just head to ksat.com. You can also find other resources on our website, including a look at a sample ballot and articles about the key races we're watching. Well, there is a constant need for blood donations in and around our community. We have seen so many people step up and help out, but still the need for blood persists. That is why I'm leading us this morning at 8 a.m. We're speaking with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. We're going to be discussing the current levels, how blood is used and how it helps so many. And of course, the Big Love Cancer Care event. If you have any questions, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Then join us later this morning, 8 a.m. for the full conversation. Well, if you didn't head out yesterday, Muertos Fest is still happening today at Hemisphere. Dia los Muertos honors the memory of those who have passed on, and you can still see the many altars, which were beautiful, by the way, that local families have built for their loved ones. There will also be music and opportunities to learn about the traditions that come with the holiday. So if you can't make it out, you can also watch our primetime special airing tonight at 8 p.m. right here on KSAT 12, KSAT.com, and of course, our streaming app, KSAT Plus, just scan the QR code on your screen like Max is doing right now for more information. I just got to have it easy access. I know. <laughs> with phones now and the QR codes, everything's so easy. Oh my gosh, you're like a dad. I am like So dad. excited. <laughs> <laughs> Time now, it works for what it's worth. Time now, 639, 51 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, how far would you go to adopt a pet? Why one woman says she made a deal with God to make it happen. And let's take a quick live look. Yeah, there we go. 51 now. Sarah, yesterday, best day of the year so far? Best day of the year so far. All right, let's see if we can repeat that Sarah today. Spivey and I have voted. <laughs> <laughs> it's unanimous. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story, Building the Ofrenda. Building an ofrenda is an important Day of the Dead tradition. These altars have many pieces and parts, and they each have a specific purpose. The colorful skulls found on many ofrendas are called sugar skulls. These days, they may not be made out of sugar, but in the beginning, they were. The art of molding granulated sugar and meringue was brought to Mexico by the missionaries. With sugar in abundance, it became a popular art supply in colonial times. So the first sugar skulls were not candy, they were decorative. So why a sugar skull? They symbolize many things, one being the sweetness of life. Originally placed on graves, the rain and wind would eventually wash them away. So they're also used to remind us of our mortality. To honor their loved one, people usually write the name of the departed on the sugar skull's forehead. It's a sweet thing to do. Wonderful there to know a little bit of history about Dia de los Muertos. Today we're going to be really pleasant with low humidity. Tomorrow, though, we will see increasing clouds and an evening rain chance, which means we've got to talk about some scattered spotty light rain as a possibility for any trick or treaters. First, let's start with the day today, though. Absolutely beautiful out there and chilly this morning. It's 51 degrees outside right now. We may even see temperatures drop a degree or two here over the next 30 minutes or so before we see the sunrise. West Northwest 
southwest winds at about five miles per hour. Good morning in Kerrville. It's 43 degrees, 47 in Hondo, 52 in Pleasanton, 50 in New Braunfels, 49 in Del Rio, 45 in Carrizo Springs. As I take you through the KSAT 12 hour forecast, sunny start to the day here for us as soon as we see the sunrise. We'll be in the low 60s around 10 and close to 70 degrees around noon. You'll notice that from the west we'll see some cirrus clouds moving in and so we'll have that milky hue to the sky in the afternoon with those high thin cirrus clouds in place. High temperature near 78, a gorgeous day and it will not be as windy as it was yesterday. We'll have winds from the west northwest at about five miles per hour. Elsewhere it'll be 75 in Bernie, Castroville you'll be at 79 degrees, 78 in Seguin, 78 in Canyon Lake, 75 in Kerrville, 78 in Floresville, and 79 in Pleasanton. As we take a look at our weather setup, you know, there's that uh, front that moved through on Friday, bringing us a little bit of rain in many areas. But to our west, there is a trough of low pressure, and that's expected to move into West Texas early tomorrow. So you'll notice that tomorrow in the morning, there will be a little bit more cloud cover. It's still going to be a cool start to the day, about 54 tomorrow. But as that low moves, continues to move uh, east into Texas, what we'll notice is that right along the border, that's where we could see some showers as early as three o'clock in the afternoon. Here in San Antonio, it should be pretty cloudy in the afternoon with those clouds increasing cloud cover and a high temperature of 77 degrees. And then closer to sunset, some scattered spotty light rain around San Antonio. This is a look at about six o'clock tomorrow. So if you're planning on taking the kids out to trick or treating, bring the umbrella with you just in case. You won't maybe need it the whole time, but you won't regret having it if you do have a light rain shower in the evening hours. Again, about 40% coverage, so not everybody is going to see rain all evening long, but the chance for scattered rain will continue throughout the overnight hours well past midnight and we do not anticipate any kind of severe weather whatsoever. Now there could be an off chance for a, a brief lightning strike. So keep in mind that if you do hear thunder, go ahead and go inside, but it, it is unlikely to see thunder and lightning around San Antonio tomorrow. So that again, this will just be a bit of a nuisance really coming uh, on Halloween evening, and it's not even going to amount to anything as far as rainfall goes in a major way for our drought. Again, scattered showers possible through early Tuesday morning through the morning commute, perhaps a damp morning commute on Tuesday morning, and then we'll see that rain move on off to the east by about midday on Tuesday. So again, not much rain from this through Monday night and Tuesday morning. Just a trace up toward Austin, perhaps a tenth of an inch around San Antonio. That's it. Again, this is not going to be bringing us any kind of relief from the drought. One area that could actually see some decent rainfall would be Del Rio, half an inch possible there, and uh, up to half an inch for the Rio Grande Valley as well, south of Corpus Christi and toward Brown and south of Laredo. So just to recap for your trick or treat forecast, spotty light rain and temperatures in the 70s and even the upper 60s if you plan on being out there a little bit later. Uh, so bring that umbrella, keep that umbrella handy. You probably won't hear any thunder, see any lightning, but in the off chance that you do, duck inside really quickly. Uh, again, it's not going to rain everywhere tomorrow, not a washout. Your kids shouldn't be too disappointed <laughs> other than a, a few isolated showers here and there. There. As we take a look at the rest of the week, though, we will see a gradual warm up by Thursday and Friday. Highs will be in the 80s and I think a decent chance for thunderstorms on Saturday of next weekend as well. Max and Sarah again, we need the rain. It's just the fact that it comes at, at an inconvenient time for us tomorrow night and early Tuesday morning with kids being outside and trick or treating. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. So yesterday, a gorgeous day to make it out to Muertos Fest. Today, though, another beautiful day. Another one. Another <laughs> one. And of course, KSAT.com for everything you need to know before you head out there. Time now, 648, 51 degrees out. All right, just ahead, carving pumpkins. It's a popular Halloween tradition, but is there a best way to do it? Why one carving hack is going viral this fall. Have you carved the pumpkins yet? No, that's what we're going to do on Halloween night. Oh. Yes, so I need to, I'm interested. All right. This hack. Take, <laughs> taking a live look out at the roadways. 
Not too much going on there at I-10 at the Y. We got one, two vehicles. If anything pops up, we'll keep you posted. All right, these lotto numbers. Pick three, zero, zero, four. Fireball five, daily four, five, six, three, six. Fireball zero. Cash five, two, four, eight, 13, 31. Lotto, Texas. Three, eight, 26, 30, 43, 52. Here we go, your Powerball numbers. We're gonna talk about this in just a little bit. No one won the jackpot last night. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a spoiler alert okay, there. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about how high this jackpot is gonna get to the next Powerball, but you could still win like a million dollars if you have some of these numbers. 19, 31, 40, 46, 57, Powerball 23, Power Play 3. Good luck, we'll be right back. Just a Good morning and welcome back. So just like candy, a carved pumpkin, obviously a Halloween staple. Hopefully not as terrifying as these. <laughs> so if you haven't made one yet, a carving hack for the pumpkin is going viral and it's actually saving people a lot of time. Okay, I'm very interested in this. 73 year old carving consultant. What, what a, a job. <laughs> right, Barbara Castillo took to TikTok with some awesome tips. She says, carve your pumpkin from the bottom oh. instead of the top, okay? And for quick cleaning and seed removal, Use a hand mixer. Oh, I guess for the bottom because it all just kind of yeah. falls out. All right. And then you mash and soften things up, then scoop it out. Okay, I need to see this TikTok video. Okay. Then use cookie cutters to design a face and Vaseline to prolong its life. Oh. Okay, so from the bottom and then you like let all the juices just like seep out, I guess. Because instead of scooping from the, you know, you go from the top. Yeah, because it's the handle. Yeah, and so like the bottom, it just all falls out. And it looks great. I like the, you know, it's like, almost like the rock. Eye yeah, thing. Right. I like that. All right, another one. A 16-year-old Halloween influencer is taking the holiday to the next level. Miles McCabe, a, or aka known as the Brick Thunder. What a nickname. What a nickname. <laughs> He's a master hot mind behind this massive Halloween display in Chicago. More than 100 animatronics and moving and making all kinds of festive sounds. It's terrifying. Wow, that is terrifying. He says he's been collecting animatronics since he was nine years old. What an interesting thing to collect for a nine-year-old. And his vision for Halloween has only grown over the years. The display is so popular. It has show times today oh. through Monday. Plus, he has two versions, a family-friendly one and one that he calls darker, scarier. Like, that looks pretty dark and scary. The clowns got me. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> time now, just about 6.55, 51 degrees out. We'll be right back after this. Good morning and welcome back. So an animal lover in Boston who found out a dog in Mississippi needed a new home didn't let the distance get in her way. So Julia Christian left Boston Logan's airport early Friday morning to the Mississippi Animal Rescue League in Jackson. She had seen a German Shepherd named Georgia up for adoption on Facebook. When she met her in person, she knew the long trip was worth it. I saw her picture and it was just so stunning. So I made a deal with God and I said, um, I'm going to move toward this direction. And if you open the doors, I'll adopt this dog. I wasn't looking. This was not my intention. So she rented a van to drive Georgia back because she didn't want Aww. the dog to endure the stress of air travel. Very sweet of her. It's the beginning, she hopes, of a long and beautiful friendship with her new best friend. Love to see it. That is adorable. I want a German Shepherd. Seriously, the best dogs. All right, so in the news you need to go before you go, check this out. ABC News reports the Powerball jackpot, because no one won the jackpot last night, it is now jumping to around a billion dollars. No jackpot winning tickets sold last night. We've been telling you throughout the morning, so the estimated prize for Halloween night's drawing is now going to be the second largest total in the history of the Powerball, the largest prize in Powerball history. Remember, $1.58 billion. That was in January of 2016. So are you guys going to play Sarah Spivey? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely, I will. Now, today will be up to 78. It's going to be a gorgeous day today. Tomorrow night, there will be some spotty, scattered light rain. So bring the umbrella if you're trick-or-treating just in case. It'll be coolish with temperatures in the low 70s and upper 60s. We'll be watching for an isolated flash of lightning, although lightning, honestly, is pretty unlikely tomorrow. So just a bit of a nuisance rain for any folks who are trick-or-treating tomorrow night. Otherwise, a beautiful day today soak up the weather today and as we look ahead to the we do have a better chance for rain on saturday of next weekend all right awesome. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much thank you for watching we'll see you back here 8 a.m you guys at eight 
Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City. Yesterday was gorgeous out there. If you made it out and about, we know there were so many events going on, including Muertos Fest happening again today. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey, see if we can get a repeat of yesterday's beautiful Saturday. But for now, happy Sunday. Good morning. Good morning. It is October 30th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So yesterday, you made it out and about. Yes, went downtown to Muertos Fest. I uh, walked along the Riverwalk. I felt like a tourist. It was amazing. I was like, our city is so beautiful, even more beautiful beautiful when you can enjoy it, Sarah, because the weather was just perfect. Honestly, it was a gorgeous day yesterday. We were only able to get up to 74 degrees. Beautiful outside today, a little bit warmer in the afternoon, but we're actually starting off chilly. It's 50 in San Antonio. It's 43 in Bernie. Good morning in Bulverde. It's 44 degrees, 52 in Canyon Lake, 43 in Bandera, 48 Port SA, 51 in Gonzalez, 46 in Yavaldi. As we mentioned, Huertos Fest going on again today from noon to 9 p.m. at Hemisphere all across San Antonio. It's going to be a beautiful day near 70 at noon, 78 for the high temperature today and in the evening temperatures will be falling into the 60s. We'll have mostly sunny skies with some cirrus clouds working their way in in the afternoon. Now there are some things that we need to talk about in the forecast for tomorrow, especially if you're planning on taking kids trick or treating in the evening. There is the potential for some spotty light rain. Now I'll tell you some important things to keep in mind if you're planning on going trick or treating. And while this rain may be more of a nuisance than anything we really need to worry about that forecast coming up for you in just a bit. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, San Antonio police are searching for a suspect in the shooting of an off duty officer who was driving home with his son. Right now, police believe the shooting was sparked by road rage. So take a look. This was a scene around 915 last night. This is on Northwest Loop 1604 at Gilbal Road. Police tell us a 47 year old off duty officer was driving home with his son. That's when another driver started to tailgate them in a white sedan. Uh, police say that driver passed the off duties or off duty officers truck, then fired several rounds. That officer was shot. His son called police for help. The officer taken to the hospital at last check in stable condition. The son, a 16 year old not injured in the gunfire. Police did find multiple shell casings on the highway during the investigation. Now, that off duty officer did not return fire. As for the suspect, they drove off after the shooting. Police still investigating, trying to figure out who exactly is responsible. Police also investigating a double shooting on the city's east side that ended with two teenagers in the hospital. This is what we know right now. Police say this happened just after 930 last night. This is along Lord Road near Loop 410. Police say three teenagers were in a fight at the Stella Apartments. That fight starting in the hallway of one of the buildings, then escalating to another. Three teens continued fighting throughout the complex. Two of them were shot in their legs, both taken to Bamsey, both in stable condition. Right now, police have one person in custody. We are still waiting to see what charges will be filed. A man and woman are recovering this morning after being hit by a wrong way driver. This happened last night just after 11. San Antonio police say a 69 year old man traveling westbound on Rigsby Avenue veered into the eastbound lanes and hit an oncoming driver head on. The two victims taken to the hospital but are expected to be OK. Police did evaluate the man for driving while intoxicated. Well, there is a constant need for blood donations in and around our community. We have seen so many people step up and help out, but still that need persists. Yeah, so joining us in today's leading essay segment is Roger Ruiz with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. Good morning, Roger. Always a pleasure to have you on our show. Always glad to, to see you, Sarah and Max. Uh, thank you for your donations in the past, and I think y'all are due for y'all's next donation. Oh, soon. yes. I know. I definitely am. Thank you, Roger, for reminding me. <laughs> thank you, Roger. So speaking of blood donations, what is the current blood supply here locally, and you know, what does that need still look like? Yeah, definitely. So this morning when I took a look, we probably are at a three-day supply um, here locally of all blood types. Uh, we probably have a day and a half right now of O. Um, all that is great and it's moving in the right direction, but because there's times when we've seen it where it's less than a day, um, but still short of the, the six days that we strive for, uh, for a community our size, for an area that we cover. So uh, the need is still there. We still need people to come in, especially as we approach the holidays. We know we're going to see a decline in, in donations as, as schools are on break and our frequent donors are, are on vacation, um, which supply about 30% 
30 to 35 percent of our blood in these high schools and colleges. So uh, if you're seeing this after the show, please make a, an appointment to come in and donate at any of our sites. There's nine locations to donate hundreds of, of mobiles that we have throughout the month that you can donate as well. So uh, if you have an hour of your time, come in and, and save some lives. Absolutely, Roger. And as you said, both Max and I have donated. We know the process is very easy super comfortable, actually pretty relaxing. So when someone does donate, where does the blood go and how is it used? Definitely. So uh, we cover a big area here in South Texas. We're 48 counties, over 100 hospitals and clinics that we serve. And 30% of, of the blood that is donated, actually, a little bit over 30%, goes to actually cancer patient, cancer patients um, in that area. And that's because they need multiple units to keep their uh, blood levels high enough, their platelet levels count, uh, high, count high enough um, to continue their treatment, either radiation or chemotherapy. And um, so we know uh, a lot of that big portion goes to, to cancer patients, but also uh, people with disorders, blood disorders like sickle cell anemia, uh, people who are premature babies who, who uh, need help, um, mothers who, who, who are just delivering and having complications. The list goes on and on and who needs blood. Um, uh, so that, that's kind of a, just in a nutshell, who needs, who needs blood and where your blood is going to uh, within those 48 counties, over 100 hospitals and clinics that we serve. Now, Roger, you brought up cancer. The Big Love Cancer Care event is ongoing right now. So tell us about the event and how does that help the community? Definitely. So uh, Big Love reached out to us, Big Love Cancer Care reached out to us and said, hey, we wanted to partner with you to see how we could not only impact blood donations, but help um, cancer, pediatric cancer patients in, in our area. And we said, yeah, definitely. So what, what we've done is um, we're making donor, we're letting donors double impact, make a double impact in the community by uh, not only donating blood and saving lives, but also uh, when you donate, you also receive points or what we call donor rewards and those donor rewards you can def, uh, go back into the donor store uh there on south texas but in our south texas blood .org and and donate those points back to big love cancer care where they are going to have an event this december where they're going to be giving away toys to these pediatric cancer patients uh and we we wanted to do this because we know people are maybe financially or not able to support in their community this this holiday season so this is a great way not only impact saving lives but putting a, a giant smile on pediatric patients uh, who are dealing with cancer and we're going through some dark times uh, and and this definitely will help them and roger you know you and i have talked about some of these pediatric cancer patients you know tell us and tell our viewers about some of the ones that you've met who are going through some of these dark times and how the blood donations are helping them and helping their families definitely um and in case that has hosted uh has featured some of those patients we we know a little three-year-old amy who's been on your show plenty of times, but yesterday I had a, uh, the privilege of, of meeting uh, one of these these uh, pediatric patients, um, Jared, a uh, smart little 12 year old boy who, uh, when we uh, when he found out about this program, definitely wanted to be an ambassador for it. And uh, if you go to our, our, our Facebook or any of our social media, he's on there now and uh, making the point that, hey, during these dark times for us, um, we, one small toy like this means the, uh, a million dollars, how he placed it, put it, and he's doing great. He was, he did a tour with me yesterday. He wanted to find out how blood worked, how, what was the process once it donated, how did it get to him? So we went through all that yesterday. He's, he's a great kid, but yeah, they, they need those blood donations to continue to, to fight, to go through their treatment of, of, of cancer, of getting chemotherapy and radiation, and blood helps them boost their cell count back up so they continue um, to not have to wait for treatment. And so this helps them greatly. 30% um, of our blood goes to these patients, and that's why it's so important that you continue to donate, donate blood, donate platelets. We need, it. We need both. Absolutely. I mean, no one really can say no to that smiling face, uh, smiling and being brave as he's going through that treatment. So anyone who wants to donate can do so by visiting our website. We'll have the link to South Texas Blood and Tissue on our website later today. All right, yeah. Roger, thank you so much for your time this morning. Anyone who wants more information, like Sarah was saying, we're going to have all that on KSAT.com throughout the morning. Time now, 809, 51 degrees out. All right, coming up on GMSA, 
a look at some of the big game coverage highlights, including the Brandeis Broncos in the first ever UIL state water polo tournament. And when we come back, taking inside a spooky car wash. Have you heard about this? I heard about this. this okay. This looks terrifying. I'm down for car washes. <laughs> not so much this No, not no that. thanks. <laughs> Absolutely not. We'll let you know how you can enjoy question mark sure. that. <laughs> All right, 51 degrees at 810 this morning. We're going to may experience some light rain tomorrow during trick or treating. Sarah will let us know about that when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. So it's October 30th. Tomorrow is Halloween. We are continuing our Halloween series this week, a trip through a haunted car wash. Yeah, okay. So it's over on Bandera Road near Grissom, and we sent our morning and evening executive producers to check it out. Take a look. So we are at a haunted car wash. That's right. This is a haunted car wash. This massive line of cars yeah. that is coming up behind us are all about to get scared in a haunted car wash. And they're out on the road. Like, they're all the way out. People are waiting just for a chance to go through this. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun. And uh, we wanted to do something for, for the city of San Antonio. Halloween is such a great holiday, right? And it's a kid's holiday. And just to see the kids faces light up and have fun, it, it, it's all worth it. Just, we'll check it out. We'll find out how well the kids held up to it compared to us. They might have done better than we did. <laughs> Maybe, probably. We're going in. I'm so freaked out right now. Our tunnel is the star. And, and we kind of have an advantage because we have the largest tunnel in South Texas. So more tunnel, more characters in there, right? More characters, the more enhanced and elevated experience. <laughs> When our, our team come up with this idea, uh, we didn't know it was going to blow up like it did. It definitely exceeded our expectations. <laughs> People are coming in. This is all, all fun, but once they get in the tunnel, they are blown away. <laughs> oh, that's so creepy. That's so creepy. Terrifying. Yeah, what are you thinking? Are you gonna try it? No. No. No, I just I'm scared haunted houses, not scary thing. things. Not my thing. You know, I like the I like the festivals and the pumpkin carving. Pumpkin carving. Yeah. All right. Things so, aren't jumping out at me. So what I was concentrated on is the actual car wash aspect of okay. this. Sarah, you say rain could be in the forecast. Yeah, I think we're gonna have some light rain tomorrow night and Tuesday morning. So hold off on the car wash okay. until perhaps uh, Tuesday afternoon. But outside right now, I mean, look at that totally blue skies, sunny skies as we start our day. It is chilly though out there this morning. It's 50 degrees. We've got dew points in the upper 40s, low humidity. And take a look at temperatures in your neighborhood. 42 in Kerrville. Good morning in Del Rio. It's 47 degrees in Del Rio. 48 in Eagle Pass. 51 in Gonzales. 53 in New Braunfels. 49 in Pleasanton. 50 in San Antonio. And a closer view around the Alamo City. We've got 49 in Seguin. 44 in Bulverde. 43 in Bernie. And it's 45 for your Medina area. Now, as we look at the forecast for the day today, your Keysat 12 hour forecast, a lot like yesterday. We're going to be warming up steadily. It'll be a beautiful, gorgeous day. 62 around 10, close to noon, it'll be near 70 degrees. We'll have light winds, about five miles per hour, first from the north and then moving toward the east in the afternoon. And throughout the day today, we are going to see some cirrus clouds increase, some of those high thin cirrus clouds. So a milky hue to 
the sky in the afternoon. 78 for the high temperature. If you're trying to squeeze in a few more Halloween festivities before the weekend is over, this evening will be cool. Temperatures will be back in the 60s by 8 p.m. As we look at highs around South Central Texas, a beautiful day, close to seasonably average. 78 in Canyon Lake, 75 in Kerrville, 79 in Hondo, 77 in Del Rio, 79 in Beeville, and 80 in Catula. Now, uh, across the nation, there are some showers and storms in the uh, Mississippi River Valley, in the northern Mississippi River Valley here near St. Louis. This is from that system that brought us the rain Friday morning and the colder weather as well. And as we look to the west, there's another area of low pressure that's going to be moving through. Now, it's not going to bring a cold front, but what it is going to do is provide some lift in the atmosphere. So as it moves off to the east tomorrow in the morning, we're going to start off mostly cloudy and cool near 54. And then as that low moves into Texas, we'll see clouds increase around San Antonio so that in the afternoon, it is going to be cloudy, 77 for the high. And out toward the Rio Grande near Del Rio, we'll even see some showers as early as 3 o'clock tomorrow in the afternoon. Then, if you're planning on taking the kids trick-or-treating, here's what you need to know. We'll have scattered light rain out there in the evening hours, about a 40% coverage, so it's not going to be raining everywhere all night, but there is a chance for some showers throughout the evening. This is a snapshot of 8 o'clock. You can see again random in nature. That's where those showers are going to be. And toward midnight, again, we're going to continue to see some showers throughout the evening. Now there's an off chance for a flash of lightning, but really severe weather is not a possibility at all, and even lightning is unlikely. Even through the early morning commute on Tuesday, Tuesday, there is still a chance for some scattered rain early Tuesday morning, but by the middle of the morning and into the afternoon, we're going to see that rain come to an end around San Antonio. So planning on taking your kids trick or treating, you need to plan for spotty scattered light rain. Bring the umbrella just in case you may not need the umbrella, but if you get caught with one of those slight rain showers, you probably won't regret having one. It'll be coolish with temperatures in the low 70s, upper 60s as the sun sets and we'll be watching for for an isolated flash of lightning. Again, lightning is unlikely, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Keep in mind that whenever you hear thunder, when thunder roars, go indoors, just stuck inside really quickly. Again, this is not going to be a washout tomorrow night by any means, just a bit of a nuisance. And coming up in the next half hour, we're going to talk about how it probably won't even really help as far as the drought is concerned. We'll take a look at rainfall potential as well. It's going to be pretty low. Otherwise, we're going to be warming up in the next week in the low 80s by Thursday and Friday. A chance for storm seems probable on Saturday of next weekend. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 821, 51 degrees. Well, next, how one famous actress and the national organization came together here in San Antonio to bring voters to the polls. And taking a live look at those lotto numbers, pick three, zero, zero, four, fireball five, daily four, five, six, three, six, fireball zero. Cash 5, 2, 4, 8, 13, 31. Texas Lotto, 3, 8, 26, 30, 43, 52. The Powerball, no one won the $825 million, Ooh. going to a billion max. Someone in Humble, though, won a million. Casual million, good for them. <laughs> 19, 31, 40, 46, 57. Powerball, 23, Power Play, 3. Good morning and welcome back. A national organization and a well-known famous actress visiting the Alamo City for a one-of-a-kind parade. So all by using tradition and a passion to rally voters to the polls. Yesterday, the actress advocate America Fedetta and the nonpartisan voter advocate group she co-founded called Harness, joined two others, When We All Vote and the other group Jolt Initiative in San Antonio's historical Avenida Guadalupe neighborhood to educate voters about their civic duty. Part of the initiative included beautiful quinceañeras using their special day to increase participation awareness among Latino voters. The young women here today have decided to use the occasion of their quinceañeras, beautiful celebration of their transition into womanhood, to engage their families and their communities around early voting. When I turned 18, I plan on voting and just keeping up with the events, to current events. There are still five days left of early voting, and it runs until November 4th. If you're interested in casting your ballot today, 
Polls are open between 12 and 6. Remember, Election Day, Tuesday, November 8th. And if you have any questions about the elections, about the polls, we have all that information. Head to KSAT.com. Time now, 826, 51 degrees out. Go Astros! Oh, Astros, Phillies, game two at Minute Maid. We have some of the biggest plays we're all talking about. And what comes next? And new developments on the release of Spurs player Josh Primo. What numerous reports from ESPN are saying. Good morning, and we'll say Happy Hallow's Eve. Yeah. Halloween Eve. Yeah, sure. You know. Yeah, Happy Sunday. Happy nice like massive. Halloween <laughs> weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Have you, you know? <laughs> figured out your uh, your costume yet? No, I I'm I'm, I'm no not costume. Gonna, I'm no costume because I was it was too late, and I if I'm gonna do a costume. I'm gonna do it very well, and I only okay. had like these two all or nothing. Yeah, and so I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna wait till next year to put this one together. Sarah Spivey, are you, you know, you throw on like a witch hat or anything like that? No, what are you saying about? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not, Max. <laughs> and by the way, I hate to break it to you. Mm. Hollow's Eve is oh. tomorrow. Huh. Okay, so today is technically Hollow's Eve Eve. Ah, happy Hollow's Eve Eve. Thank you. Thank you. I won't forget that witch comment. Okay, <laughs> let's take a look at some of the temperatures out there this morning. It is very chilly out there. It's 50 in San Antonio, 44 in Bolverde, 45 in Rio Medina, 42 in Kerrville, 40, uh, 54 rather in Divine, and 49 at Stinson. So chillier start than yesterday for us, but we're actually going to be warmer in the afternoon than we were yesterday. Yesterday we got up to 74 degrees. Today we're going to get up to 78. A beautiful, gorgeous day. Low humidity, not even that much wind. Wind from the west northwest at about five miles per hour. We will see some cirrus clouds increase throughout the day today, but generally again a beautiful and mostly sunny day. Cool in the evening with temperatures falling into the 60s. So what we're going to talk about in the forecast is yes, pleasant with low humidity. I'll show you neighborhood highs across south central Texas. But tomorrow there are a couple of things that I want you to keep in mind. During the day tomorrow we are going to see increasing clouds and even some rain chances in the evening. That does include trick or treating when we'll see scattered spotty light rain. But don't cancel your plans to take your kids out trick or treating because I think that it's going to be a bit more of a nuisance than anything out there tomorrow night. I'll show you that for Cassie and the future cast coming up. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, one man is dead. Another is in the hospital this morning after a traffic stop in Seguin. That's according to the Seguin Gazette. In the report, a DPS trooper arrived to help what he believed to be a stolen pickup truck, citing DPS on scene. The report said when the trooper got out of his vehicle, the driver of the truck put it in reverse, backing into the law enforcement vehicle. That's when they say the trooper opened fire on the truck, striking the driver and the passenger. The driver was reportedly pronounced dead on the scene. The passenger was brought to a San Antonio hospital. His condition is still unknown. An inmate facing a new charge this morning, a charge of escape. She tried to leave the jail annex. So this is what we know right now. Bear County Sheriff's deputies tell us an inmate tried to make a run for it yesterday morning. They say 38-year-old Genevieve Golden ran out of an emergency exit door. Now, a jailer at the jail saw her, immediately ran after her, took her back into custody. Golden now facing a charge of escape. Deputies say she was originally in jail for an arson charge from earlier this month, and that charge was a first-degree felony. Well, a popular pizza place getting its permit suspended and a sports bar cited for operating without a permit. Those are just a few things we see in today's Behind the Kitchen Door. Puesto Mexican restaurant earned a 79 on their recent inspection, but you wouldn't know it based on the old score posted on the front door. This time around, they were cited for having boxed potatoes on top of an open garbage can, and they had to toss out incorrectly dated foods in a walk-in cooler. Employees were preparing food with bracelets on, another was wearing nail polish and handling food with their bare hands, and one was seen washing their hands incorrectly. Shelves in the walk-in cooler were rusty and the walls by the water heater were moldy. Grimaldi's Pizzeria in the 300 block of Bassey got an 82 but had their food permit suspended due to not having hot water. They also needed to clean the inside of the ice machine, the vent hood, and repair a leak on their hand sink. A reinspection was ordered. They were back up and running when we stopped by this week. 
April Chinese restaurant in the 2000 block of South Alamo comes in with an 84. They were cited for having a box of raw chicken on the floor. The cold hold unit and walk-in coolers were not maintaining proper temps, and there was food debris in the cold hold, dirty soda nozzles, and dust and debris on the shelf where clean dishes are kept. Squeeze In Sports Bar and Club in the 1700 block of General McMullen earned an 84. They were cited for operating without a valid permit, and they owed over $1,000 in fees. They were limited to only selling bottles and cans of beer and bags of chips until several violations were corrected. There was no hot water in the restrooms, and they needed to add some more sinks. I stopped by this week, an employee showed me they now have the proper permits and said they're working on making repairs requested by the inspector. I mean, it gave them till December to fix like holes in the walls and, and stuff. Do you know if there's yeah, construction they, they, that's, that's they, they, ongoing? They've been working during the week. That's what's happening behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Well, 15 people injured after a school bus crashed on its way to a high school football game in Longview. The Elkhart Independent School District says the bus was taking cheerleaders to a game in Clifton. It was raining at the time of the crash. The bus rolled over at a curve of the road just three miles west of Elkhart. Now, 12 students, two faculty members, and one infant on board. They were all taken to a nearby hospital. All the injuries are non-life-threatening. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says her family is heartbroken and traumatized after the recent attack on her husband. In a letter to members of Congress on Saturday, she said she appreciated the outpouring of prayers and warm wishes for Paul Pelosi's recovery. In her first comments since the attack, she says the life-threatening incident has frightened her children and grandchildren. The speaker also took time to praise the quick response of San Francisco law enforcement and emergency services. Now to some new developments on the release of the Spurs player Josh Primo. Multiple reports from The Athletic and from ESPN claim that Primo exposed himself to women. Now, the reports were first published yesterday. ESPN's Ramona Shelburne, the first to report the news. Sham Sharania of The Athletic says that Primo allegedly exposed himself to a former Spurs employee and that she has already hired attorney Tony Busby to represent her. Tony Busby, you may remember the name. He represented 30 women who sued Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson for sexual misconduct. Now, this comes 24 hours after the Spurs waived Josh Primo. Remember, he was the former first-round pick in the 2021 NBA draft. There still are allegations, and Primo is still 19 years old. Now, he's currently scheduled to hit free agency, hit the free agent market on Monday, unless another team claims him. We're obviously going to have much more on this story as it develops in the weeks to come. Now to the latest in the MLB playoffs. Astros taking on the Phils in Game 2 of the World Series last night in Houston. And it is a very familiar territory for them. So up three, bottom of the fifth, one on for Alex Bregman. And wait for it. Bang! Kiss the ball. Goodbye. A two-run blast to left center. Astros going up 5-0. Not the first time they've been up 5-0 in this I know. World Series, <laughs> but this time they did not blow the lead. So take a look at the final. Astros go on to win it 5-2. The series now tied at one game apiece. Game three headed back to the East Coast. That is set for Monday in Philadelphia. Go Strohs. Home, the first ever UIL state water polo tournament held yesterday at Josh Davis Natatorium. Start off with the Brandeis girls. They were the first to represent our area against Brazos Wood in the semifinals. Uh, Broncos getting on the board first after we get all the cheerleading and excitement out of the way. Breakaway for Addie Wilson, putting it past the keeper. A 1-0 lead a little later. She would find Grace Goldhammer first shot. There we go, right in the near post. Broncos holding a 3-2 lead early in the first, but the Buccaneers answer with eight straight to lead 10-3 at halftime. A historic season for the Broncos. And it comes to the end in the semis, 15 to 4. Our goal was really to start out strong. Like our past games, we've always started out into the fourth quarter. So we wanted to start out strong. Unfortunately, we had some penalties and ejections, which kind of hurt our offense a little bit and defense. But you know what? We started out strong and we made our goal. We came to stay. So congratulations to everyone. And obviously, we have the water, or the men's water polo, as well as all the high school football. We got Football from yesterday, we know, uh, you know, the Aggies played. So there was that. I'm optimistic, Sarah Spivey. Cautious optimism. Hey, and the Cowboys play today at noon. Cowboys play today at noon, taking on the Bears, so that should be a win. Time now, <laughs> just about 840, 53 degrees out. This is really 
creepy. Are you ready to get scared some more? After the break, we're wrapping up our haunted series as a haunt our crew has never gone through before. Oh, interesting. So obviously all of this leading up to Halloween, Sarah Spivey telling us, could see some rain, but for today, it's gonna be picture perfect out there. We're gonna have a full forecast in just a bit. All right, all week we've been taking you through different creepy hot spots around town. Some of our morning team at GMSA decided to check out Haunted Oaks, and it's at Rolling Oaks Mall. All right, so this time we're actually getting a behind the scenes look and we're meeting the cast. I know that we're more gruesome than a lot of other haunted houses out there. But that's what we want. Like we want y'all to be in that experience. Are you sure it was me? Like if it's your birthday, you come in, we hear that it's your birthday, we literally start saying happy birthday throughout the hunt. We find out your name, it's free game. We say your name throughout the hunt, we yell it. This is really creepy. We really invite all ages, as long as the parents are okay with their kids coming in. The, the kids get glow sticks and we interact with the kids as well. We won't scare them, like they just point their glow sticks at one of our actors and we fall to the floor for the kids. Are you breathing? No, I'm not breathing. I stopped breathing a long time ago. I said go. down and have fun. Do you have a friend with you here? Yeah, this is my, my little piggy. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh my God. Like I said, I hope you're having a hell of a I'm shook right now. I feel like I say that all the time, but it was pretty crazy. This one was pretty crazy. I, like I think I screamed a lot. I, oh, I know you screamed a lot. <laughs> it's important. It was way longer too than I thought. Like Yeah, that was, uh, that was a really long thing. It was I intense. We made it out. We survived. Y'all should check it out. Are you going to check this one out, Max? You know what? I think I'm going to pass for this one. But I got to <laughs> say, as we prepare for Halloween, a lot of parents, a lot of families are asking, should I bring an umbrella? Yeah, okay. I think that good, it'll be a good idea to okay. bring an umbrella just in case tomorrow night because even though today is going to be pleasant with low humidity, tomorrow we're going to start to see increasing clouds and an evening rain chance. The key word for tomorrow is spotty light rain during trick-or-treating. Spotty being the key word there. Not everyone is going to be seeing light rain, but you don't want to be caught without an umbrella, especially with those little Frankensteins and goblins <laughs> running around. Outside right now beautiful and sunny it's 50 degrees chilly to start off our sunday good morning in kerrville it's 44 degrees 47 in yavaldi 48 in hondo 53 in new Braunfels, 53 in pleasant 47 in del rio and 49 in Catula. gradual warm-up today a lot like yesterday a beautiful day just a couple of degrees warmer in the afternoon we'll be near 70 by lunch hour have that sunday brunch outside it's going to be gorgeous out there and we'll see increasing cirrus clouds throughout out the day those high thin cirrus clouds cirrus clouds are made out of ice crystals they put a bit of a milky hue on the horizon that's going to be the case this afternoon 78 degrees for the high temperature and if you're tra trying to squeeze in a holiday party tonight a halloween party tonight know that it is going to be a little on the cool side temperatures will fall back into the 60s after sunset all in all fairly close to the seasonal average of 77 degrees this afternoon it'll be 75 in bulverde helotus you'll be at 75 degrees 79 in Hondo, 79 in Bandera, 78 in Seguin and New Braunfels, 78 in Nixon Smiley, 78 in Floresville, and 79 in Pleasanton. As we look at our weather setup, there's our exiting system that's bringing some rainfall uh, to parts of uh, the Midwest. That's that front that moved through Friday morning and brought us some rain. Our next system actually doesn't have a cold front. It's a trough of low pressure that's uh, right over parts of the desert southwest. And as it moves into 
into Texas, we're going to see increasing clouds tomorrow morning, mostly cloudy. It'll be cool and quiet 54 degrees. But as that low moves into Texas, we'll get a little bit of lift. We'll start to see cloudy skies in the afternoon. 77 for the high temperature tomorrow. And if you live out near Del Rio off to the west, there could be some showers in the early afternoon hours tomorrow. But around San Antonio, we'll see some scattered light rain as early as five, six o'clock. So before sunset, about 40% coverage there. Again, scattered, spotty, light rain being the key word there. We do not anticipate any severe weather whatsoever. And even lightning is going to be hard to come by. This is a snapshot tomorrow at around 8 p.m. Again, 40% chance for that scattered light rain throughout the evening into the overnight hours as well. And by Tuesday morning, there could be some damp spots for the morning commute on Tuesday. But by about lunch on Tuesday, all of that rain should be off to the east. So as far as rainfall, again, we are not talking much rain. This is not going to help us out where the drought is concerned by any means. If you're lucky around San Antonio, perhaps a tenth of an inch of rain with more expected out west toward Del Rio, about a quarter to half and about a quarter to half inch of rain possible for parts of deep south Texas. But again, light rain, very light, just a bit of a nuisance for anybody who's planning on being outside trick or treating tomorrow night. Take that umbrella with you just in case you may not even need it for most of the night and temperatures will be on the cool side. We'll be looking at uh, after especially after sunset temperatures in the upper 60s. So just keep in mind that we'll be with you throughout this. If you want to have a radar with you on your uh, trick or treating excursions tomorrow night, make sure to have the case weather authority app handy because not only is there a radar on there, but we're also going to be sending updates to you live on your phone as necessary as you're taking those kiddos trick or treating. Otherwise, we're going to see a gradual warm up after the rain ends mid morning Tuesday 80s by Thursday and Friday. It'll be humid by Thursday and Friday too, and a chance for storms seems possible on Saturday of this upcoming weekend. Right now we're saying 40% scattered storms, but we could be raising that uh, as we get closer to the weekend. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. So you are handing out candy, though. Absolutely. You expect trick-or-treaters. I expect a handful. And you're, and you're <laughs> not going to have any costume on? I'll do something. Okay. I'll do something quick. Okay. You know. I'm also going to be carving pumpkins at the same time. Ooh, I want to see pictures. Okay. All right, time now. It's just about 8.51, 51 degrees out. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, we'll be giving you some safety tips when it comes to you and your family, making sure that everyone is safe and having a fun Halloween. Don't forget, Muertos Fest still happening today from noon to 9 p.m. If you can't make it out, you can watch our primetime special airing tonight on KSAT at 8 p.m. Also on KSAT.com and our streaming app KSAT+. Plus. Take out your camera and um, scan this QR code on your screen for all of that information. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful day outside. Temperatures are going to climb into the upper 70s this afternoon. Of light winds from the west northwest at about five miles per hour. Going to be cool tonight, too, with temperatures falling into the 60s. Tomorrow, you'll see increasing clouds. Most of Monday will be quiet, but right around the time of trick or treating, you should plan for some spotty, scattered light rain. Bring the umbrella just in case. You may not need it, but it'll be good to have. It'll be coolish, too, with temperatures in the low 70s and upper 60s. No no severe weather is possible tomorrow and even lightning is unlikely, but we'll still be watching for watching for an isolated flash of lightning. So remember when thunder roars go indoors again, I don't think we're going to have much lightning out there tomorrow, mainly just some light spotty rain in the evening, about 40% coverage and throughout the day on Tuesday in the morning, we'll have some rain, but we'll by midday hours, it should be clearing out there nicely. As we look ahead to the week, it'll be warm by Thursday and Friday in the 80s with some some humidity and a better chance for rain on Saturday of next weekend. Right. Next year, we need to have costumes, all three of us. Deal. Witch, okay. mommy, gremlin. I don't know. We'll have to brainstorm. That's not going to happen. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Have a great day. Happy Sunday. Go